five, four, three, two, one. This is it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the College Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ben Jordan. Today, I'm joined by Trevor Rodriguez, one of my good friends that I've known for a long time here uh, while being at university. And on this podcast, we're here to talk to you about anything and everything related to college. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about international students on camp- campus and hype beast culture. Here's what I don't understand about hype beast culture, right? Where are they finding these articles of clothing, right? Because, you know, I've never seen it in any stores here. Are they shipping it online? Where is it coming from? Well, they must be buying it online, I'd assume, because I know in Minnesota there's not a very... I mean, I mean, there is one hype beast store that I know of in um, Como Avenue above Dinkytown. But other than that, I think even at the Mall of America, they've tried opening up more like high end uh, hype beast type clothing stores. I don't know if those still exist. I remember seeing a few. Have you seen any of those stores at the Mall of America? I think one's called Third Degree Heat or something. They they have like Yeezys you can win in a claw machine. They have a claw machine with Yeezys? Yeah, they got a claw machine with Yeezys on it. It's like $5 to play. They have like Air Force One, Jordans, like uh, um, I'm trying to think. I don't know the colorways, but they have like hype shoes, like very expensive shoes in there. Well, Trevor, I know you yourself have a pair of Yeezys, but have I ever actually seen you wear those, or you nah, just keep that, them in a box on display in your apartment? That's actually a display piece. They're fake Yeezys. Got them off of China now. They're actually real Yeezys, uh, but no, nah, I, I don't want to wear them and get them dirty. I just kind of like, uh, I don't know. I just like keeping them clean. So how long have you had them for, though? Three months, six months. I don't know. Since Christmas. Were you the one that bought them, or did you no, get them I, as a I gift? No, I got them. I got them as a gift. You got them as a gift. Dang. Well, I've never had a pair of Yeezys. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What's what's the appeal around Yeezys? Is it just because Kanye made them? or Yeah, it's Kanye made them. I, I think they're really comfy. They have like Adidas Boost on the inside. Um, the colors are cool, but I don't know. I think it was just a different shoe at the time, and then now they're super hyped up, but I don't know. They're just Yeezys. And on today's topic, I mean, you do live in one of the higher end apartments on campus. Do you notice a lot of international students like rocking uh, Yeezys and driving around in BMWs or is that just a myth? Uh, I haven't seen a lot of international students wear it. The people next to me, though, man, they're always rocking some Louis Vuitton backpacks or shoes. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know what other brands. I've seen some some wear like Balenciaga. He had Louis Vuitton luggage like coming back Louis from Vuitton sp- luggage <laughs> yeah, i had louis vuitton <laughs> luggage coming back from spring break man's was just balling like he didn't need to flex that hard but oh man and so these aren't even international students these are just people living next to you no i think it's just young people who want to show that they have money but in reality mm. they probably don't have that much money like just wear some converse or vans right like in reality it's probably all their their parents money wouldn't you say Mm-hmm. i mean i'd imagine so i don't know I don't think kids our age make... I do know people, though, who do get a part-time job and, like, spend paycheck to paycheck. They just spend it all on clothes, which I don't think is the best investment, but... I I don't know. You look at some of the Supreme clothing, though, and it's like you can resell it for hundreds of dollars. You know, like, people think Supreme is expensive, but it's people reselling it that makes it expensive. Like, yeah, it's a little bit on the pricey side buying it new from Supreme, like, probably 50 bucks for a T-shirt, but when you resell it on eBay for 250 you can make a good de- killing off of it. But I think there's also bots that buy it for you. That's true. I have even seen, I think, some documentaries on YouTube where uh, people will stand outside of the Supreme store for like 24 hours. And people will come and actually pay these people standing in line and say, hey, can you get this um, new T-shirt that's dropping for me? And they'll give them like a $20, $30 commission. Um, because this person is already standing in line. And then once they come out of the store, they'll just hand it to them. And that's actually like how these people are making money on like, like as a side hustle. I think it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's definitely a side hustle. I don't, I don't know if it's sustainable. I think we're in the wrong city to do it. New York would be a good city because they have the Supreme store and, you know, Supreme drops their closing every Thursday, I believe. And it's like lines around the block just to wait for it. Do you see a lot of international students here, though, like in Supreme? Or, I mean, what are what are the common, like, brands that you've seen? Supreme, Balenciaga. You know, the thing with high fashion, though, is a lot of it, sometimes you don't know it's, like, expensive. I'm pretty sure I saw a pair of, like, Louboutins before, like, red-bottom shoes, which are hecka expensive. But 
it's hard to know. Like, I'm not that into the scene. I just notice it like, oh, those are nice shoes, probably expensive. But right. I think that's the thing, too. A lot of people have no idea, like how much items cost. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, I feel like a lot of the people that are wearing this high end stuff, they want people to notice what they're wearing and then just assume like, oh, this person has a lot of money or like, look at this clothing that this person's wearing. Like, that, that must have cost them so much. But I feel like you're right. A lot of people don't actually know what people are wearing. For example, do you know the brand Off-White? Oh, yeah, Off-White. I've seen some <laughs> Off-White. So Off-White, what they do is they take, they collab with like brands like um, Nike and whatnot, and they'll just take a pair of Nike shoes. And uh, the creator of Off-White is a, girl, uh, is a guy named uh, Virgil Abra. And what he'll do is he'll just put the word, like, shoe on on the side of, like, a, a Nike Air Max or something. and Or he'll take a shirt and he'll put T-shirt. And then he'll put the address of the the off-white store and whatnot. And these things sell for, like, six to $700. And I think people just don't even know what it is. And I pers- personally have heard people say that it, they think it's pretty stupid. I don't know. I don't own any off white. No, but... Look, you want to see something really stupid? Have you heard of the off white IKEA collaboration? I'm going to show you this, and <laughs> I'll explain it for people who are listening. There's a rug. It's a rug of a mountainscape, and then in bold text with quotes around it says "still loading." And here are your thoughts. What do you think about this? This is a rug <laughs> from Off White. Yeah, Off White rug collaboration with IKEA. Are people like wearing this? No, no, it's a it's a rug. <laughs> you put it in your home. <laughs> I was like, are people wrapping this around? No, themselves? no, no. They also have an Off White IKEA IKEA cur- receipt. <laughs> yeah, I- IKEA receipt curtain. No. So it's like you're hanging that up on your wall to block the sun. What, what is this? Tell me, like. What the heck? So what we're looking at here is just a wood framed box with glass panes, with just a glass pane and a red string in the middle of it. Uh, nowhere does it say how much it would cost, but I'm assuming it's probably at least $300. I know one of the rugs. Oh, here we go. This is a rug that looks like grass. And in quotes, again, it says wet grass. And it's just a green. It's just a green wet rug with white text that says wet grass. And they're probably out there selling this for five hundred dollars. Yeah, it, it says here they say the table is going to cost approximately three hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, a cushion for a chase lounge is about one fifteen. And I don't know. I think a hype beast definitely would have this in their college apartment, <laughs> and just try and flex the, the IKEA off white rug pretty hard. Wow. And to think it only costs like probably three to five dollars to make this or maybe ten dollars at most. And they're making just massive profits off of just pretty basic, simple stuff. I, I have seen a few of the international students on campus wearing um, IKEA like hats and IKEA shirts. Is that like a recent trend, do you think? Or like, how yeah. did that even start? I do definitely you know? have seen some uh, international students with like IKEA bags, the blue bags. They'll bring their all their uh, school stuff in it. So I don't know. I think it's definitely gaining traction on campus. Have you also seen the the couples that match from like head to toe, <laughs> like in the in the hype beast club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the hype couples. Yeah, they definitely. <laughs> Like, they'll both be wearing Balenciaga, like, shirts or something, and it's just, why? Why would you do that? (laughs) Do you think uh, you would ever do that, Trevor? (laughs) No, definitely not. There's no need for me to do that, I think. I like a very monochromatic black and white color scheme most of the time, or little pops of color, but nothing too bold, too brash. It's just very mild for me. There's so there's actually a name for these couples I figured out. There's like a name. Um I think I don't see these really in America. I think they're mostly people do this from like Japan and Korea. But if you're you and your girlfriend like wear the same clothing, you um it's called a pair set cuz you're like a pair and they call it pair set. And I I even know in Japanese it's called like pair setto or like something like that. It sounds like pair set, but um Yeah, it's just where you wear, like, the same T-shirt, the same shorts, the same everything, basically. Sometimes they even dye their hair the exact same color uh, just to basically look like, I don't know, exactly the same. And it's like, uh, they think it's cute, I guess. Hmm. My question is, though, I think we see a lot of this international student hype beast where 
I think a lot of it is if you can afford to go to school in America, mm. I think it's you have a lot of money necessarily to come here. So it's like, oh, $100 for a shirt isn't that much when you're paying to go to school in America. And I, I've read some articles where it's like the cost of education in China is so much more expensive or like the cost of cars. Because, you know, you see international students, too. They're driving a Audi, a Mercedes, a BMW. I've seen them in a like chrome wrap Tesla before. And it's like, where are you getting this money to like get a car? And it's like a car in China like that is 10 times the price you would pay here. So when you see $80,000 and it would cost you 200000 that's a bargain that's a steal for a nice car wait but aren't the wages in china like way lower than the united states though in terms of usd like how would a car be more you you have the businessmen you know it might be the guy running the chinese factory because think about it china has so much manufacturing now that the u.s sends a lot of it made in china you see it on everything so who's like running these factories you have companies paying millions to get their product manufactured there. So I think, you know, if you're a son of a boss at the power plant, or not power plant, manufacturing plant, you have the money to afford it and send your kid to a nice school. That's true. And a lot of them I know are like single child, so they just get completely spoiled and whatnot. But, I mean, even like the people that have a car on the campus, like that doesn't even seem convenient unless you're trying to go out farther and go to some grocery stores and restaurants and what's not it's like i wouldn't want to be stuck in traffic around here i think i'd rather just walk or take a bus i think yeah living in a like right next to a big city we have a train that you you know you take two stops and you're in a city with target and whole foods and trader joe's and everything i don't see the need for a car on this type of campus maybe if you went to a smaller school where things are really really spaced out but here, it's just everything's walking distance. If you want food, it's at most two, three blocks away from you. It's not, there's no need for a car. It's not handy. Right. I guess it's just all for the flex, <laughs> I'd assume. But yeah, I mean, you said you saw, what kind of cars have you seen? Um, uh, I've seen being driven by international students. I've seen Porsches. I saw a Porsche uh, 911, like Cayman. Uh, I've seen Audi S6s. I've seen BMW M3. There's always a uh, yellow M3 that drives around, I believe, on campus and just parks. He has Hello Kitty like plushes in the back of his car too. Like it's just why he he's just I don't understand. Mercedes, there's a Mercedes G wagon. It's a let, let me look up the price here for a G wagon, but it's a it's a super expensive car, and it's just like how who is affording this and like how can you get, let's see a G wagon starts at one hundred and twenty four thousand dollars. Oh my god, it's insane, and you can go up to one hundred and fifty thousand with specific or like customization options. It's just like how do you afford that as a student? I mean, you can't. There's no way you can personally afford that unless you're, you you know you had a startup at a young age. But does it make sense to let your child drive a hundred and fifty thousand dollar car at the age of eighteen, twenty? So with that money too, you could probably just buy a Lambo, I assume. Nah, not yet. Not yet. Interesting. I don't think so. Yeah, that it just amazes me, like how ridiculous that is having a car like all that but yeah i assume that these kids are coming from china mostly i know most of the international students do come from china and yeah i assume with the cost that it the amount it costs for an international student to go to the u is also like i don't know four to five times the amount that we're paying so just to be here you would have to have a lot of money for sure unless you're on some sort of big scholarship but that's definitely that's definitely crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I have a few uh, international student hype beasts that I see. But do you think that some of the stuff they're wearing is just counterfeit goods from China? Also, oh for sure. I mean, counterfeits are getting so good nowadays. Somebody has to be flexing like off yellow, <laughs> uh, off beige, off cream. You know, something something close to off white, but not off white. Mm. And have you seen the, um, have you ever been on the websites like DH Gate or like Alibaba? Oh, Alibaba, I know for sure. Yeah, that's like the hub. That's the hub for any counterfeits. What's the other one? Uh, Wish? Yeah, Wish. <laughs> you can get a lot of cheap stuff on Wish and it's not up to par, but. Right. And with um, with DH Gate, 
for those of you who don't know, it's a website where it, it became popular, I think, because a lot of people started buying like fake jerseys, like NBA jerseys, NFL jerseys, and you could get them for like $10 or $15 from China. And they keep getting better and better looking like they keep looking more realistic. I mean, at some point, you're not even going to know that it's fake. And I've even seen some of the documentaries on YouTube of people in China that are selling these counterfeit purses or these counterfeit shoes, and they're just making a killing sending it to America. And it's like, how do you how do you prevent that stuff? Like, if the, is there a way to prevent that or? No, nah, definitely not. There's a lot of Chinese like uh, copyright laws are non-existent. So if it can be copied, it will be copied. There's nothing really protecting you. The copyright laws in China are completely different so that's where you can get like fake iphones and all it takes is like to get one actual iphone and they can just reverse engineer it and you'll have a copy uh or counterfeit like in a week or so i think actually too um i was just reading an article a day or two ago about how trump like signed a law that is trying to somehow end like copywriting in china and like counterfeit goods coming into the United States. I don't know how they would do this. I mean, every day there's millions of packages coming into the United States through the Postal Service, and they don't have time to open every single one of these. And also, goods that are coming in like counterfeit can be disguised pretty well, I know too, and put into multiple packages that are hard to open and made to look um, not suspicious. And what are you going to do, though? Like, you're going to hire someone to... (laughs) <laughs> open like how do you i don't know there's logistically there's no way to prevent that like it would just be mm-hmm. too much work to get someone to look into your pack i don't know that's exactly and people would probably get really mad if they found out that every package that they ordered was being like searched through and stuff for counterfeit goods i guess the way i would pre- thinking back to it is like you have a official certifier come by and certify you're an official retailer but then how would you mark the package? Like official tape? Well, now that's just going to get counterfeited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're going to slap that on the package and then send it off. And what do you think happens to the counterfeit goods that do get stopped at the border? Like do they just throw them into the trash or does some border agent walk off with a fresh pair of fake Yeezys? <laughs> no, nah, they probably are going to try and start an investigation. <laughs> if anything, like they, you know, it's like probably smuggled in drugs kind of where it's like, they have you've seen pictures probably of like the rooms of like just filled with cocaine and it's like this is a billion dollars of cocaine i think and then they just store it like i don't know what do you do with that so i'm guessing you just store the counterfeit goods yeah i don't know i know they keep finding sneakier and sneakier ways for all that types of stuff but back to the topic of um international students i've also heard um things about how Some of the international students from China are really just here to get a degree with an American university name on it. Been a huge scandal, I think, for for cheating on campus and for cheating on exams. Have you heard about that? Yeah, not no. I uh, I haven't read up in the information. I know there was someone we wasn't there like a professor that got caught with a scandal of like a billion dollars or something. It was like a Chinese CEO, I don't I don't remember the full story, so I'm not going to talk about it. Was that here at, at Minnesota? or? Yeah, it was here. It was like a friend talked about it. Remember? he? I don't know. I don't know the full story, and I, I don't remember what it's called, so I can't look it up. Okay. Well, interestingly, I was talking to an international student from China once, and um, she was showing me how that they have these huge group chats. And she showed me this group chat with probably – three to four hundred Chinese international students in it and they all mostly are taking the same classes together and whatnot and they were actually like sharing all these documents together helping each other out for tests so I wouldn't say it's exactly cheating but they had this huge team I'd say of 300 400 people and some of those people in that groups have taken the same classes you might be taking now and they have previous answers or previous tests that they took so it's just uh, i mean it seems like they got this whole system down that uh we don't even know about 
it's uh it's like the underground railroad <laughs> for for Chinese international students. And you know, the thing is nobody on campus knows Chinese unless you're Chinese or you are yeah. like very interested in it. So I feel like cheating is probably much easier when the language is very hard to learn. You know, Spanish you can probably pick up like everybody here at least knows probably a little bit of Spanish or they've heard Spanish before, but not many people know Chinese, you know. It's there's it's still like taboo a little bit, which is kind of sad because it's been hundreds of years. But hey, change is slow, I guess. Right, and I never thought about that either. Um, that's interesting, yeah. But I'm not I'm not trying to shit on the Chinese international students and say they're all cheaters or they're all they're all rich. I mean, there's definitely a ton that are super nice people that I've met on campus and have classes with. I have some that I'm friends with in my classes right now. But yeah, I just think it's. I think it's funny to see the the Balenciaga, like you said, and the Yeezys come out, and the well, oh, the the most though, the most popular item. I don't know if you know what I'm about to say, but what do you, how many Canada Goose jackets oh do you God. think you saw this Canada, winter? <laughs> yo, Canada Goose is it's a thousand dollars for a jacket. If you don't know what Canada Goose is, it's a it's it's a down jacket made out of goose feathers, and they're pretty warm, but they're so expensive, eight hundred plus dollars for a jacket, right? And here we had a day that was about negative fifty with wind chill, and I saw someone joke about if you have a Canada goose, you're obligated to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's true because it's like there's no point in a jacket that's warm, like unless you're going to the Arctic. Like a lot of the jackets are designed to go into Antarctica or these very sub-zero temperatures. Yes, Minnesota gets to negative five, ten degrees sometimes. But I don't think you need a thousand dollars jacket for that. My a hundred dollar North Face jacket, two hundred dollar North Face jacket does the job just fine, and I've never felt frigid. I mean, it's sometimes cold, but I still stay warm. Wow, look at you rocking the North Face. <laughs> North Face is a is a okay brand. Are the Canada Goose jackets though? I've I've never actually worn one before, so I'm not sure, but. Are they actually warm and like well made? Oh, they the the build quality on them is is excellent. I think like if you just even feel one like the, I don't know what they use. It's like a, it feels like canvas almost. It's so it's thick. It's a thick material, and I think yes, it's worth the price maybe, but I don't know. I wanted Canada Goose gloves at one point, but they're two hundred dollars, and that's Whoa. for gloves. <laughs> I don't exceed about twenty five dollars. Well, for the jackets too, like, do you think they're popular just because they're expensive, or how did it all blow up? Are they relatively new? Do you know also because I don't remember seeing Canada Goose jackets like back in high school a few years ago. Uh, nah, nobody ever wore Canada Goose in high school, as far as I know. I, my mom was telling me an article about how. Some schools are banning Canada Goose because it's such a status symbol and it like makes other people feel bad about like having an inferior jacket. So it's definitely it's definitely expensive. I don't know. Let's see. I'm looking up the price right now. Look, a Canada Goose Expedition multi pocket coat parka coat with a fur hood uh, in women's a thousand dollars. What a thousand dollars for a jacket? Yeah, from Get Neiman out. from Neiman Marcus a thousand dollars. And, you know, it's just, I don't know what you need, $1,000. I, I I know they're not a great company. I remember reading an article. It's like they use dog fur or they use, like, some animal fur for the hood, and it's just horrible because they're just, like, taking real animal fur and putting on their jackets. I thought you said they use goose feathers or something. They use goose, fe- goose feathers for the inside. Just for the inside of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, geese don't have fur. I guess. <laughs> have you ever yeah, seen you're right. You're right. <laughs> So dang, they're selling these for a thousand. So there was actually a school that banned Canada Goose jackets. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it was like a high school or something that banned Canada Goose because it just made others feel bad. Wow. Well, maybe they they ought to start banning uh, Louis Vuitton luggage and uh, Supreme and Louis Vuitton <laughs> and all those things. But I mean, how much would you? How much would you spend? for like a brand you really like i mean what's the max price you're gonna pay for like a t-shirt or a hoodie from like your favorite streetwear brand for a t-shirt no more than 40 bucks a hoodie no more than 80 
I think pretty good. I think that's reason. That's about average for those articles of clothing. It depends. If I'm going for a certain look, and it's very unique, maybe I'll spend a little bit more on a piece of clothing. But at the end, it's a piece of clothing. It's gonna f- last you five years, most probably. If not, it depends. Like fast fashion, like H and M, I never find that lasting more than a year. <laughs> mm-hmm. And do you care about streetwear that much, or? Uh, I mean, I th- I always just want to look good. I don't think it's necessarily streetwear. Streetwear for me is like whatever you make it. So like I thrift sometimes. Like I got a, a Fial Raven jacket for ten dollars, and I looked online. It was like two hundred. I was like, wow, what a steal! Mm-hmm. Who would donate this? But you know, sometimes the coolest looking outfits are the cheapest too. It's not necessarily just a big shirt that says Armani Exchange on it, or it's not a shirt that says Super Dry on it across the top. It's just it's whatever you make it. You can make it whatever you want. And what do you think about the people out there or like, for example, the girls that are all trying to wear like the Nike Air Force ones or the ones who got um, what's like, an, I guess, what's another like super popular thing like that that you've seen? Lululemon leggings. Lululemon leggings with the uh, Nike Air Force ones or like the boxy Fila's. Have you seen those? Oh, the Fila disruptors. Yes, Is the chunky, chunky yeah, shoes. Yeah, chunk. What do you think about the chunky, Yo, chunky shoes? shoes movement? Look, <laughs> <laughs> I think they look good on the right person. I think you can't be chunky <laughs> yourself to wear <laughs> chunky shoes because then it's just, I don't know. That's it's hard. I know a girl who wears them and she looks. She genuinely looks good in the Fila disruptors. It fits her style somehow. I think I'm getting more used to the, seeing them around. Well, campus what is what is the style to pull off the feel of chunkies <laughs> well, I mean, what do you have, what do you mean what is uh what do you have to be like like kawaii girl that's the girl i know she's very like japanese inspired like cute pink a lot of pink i think if you're gonna wear the there's two ways i see you could wear them either you have these bold chunky shoes and a very plain bottom and top or you just go all out, chunky shoes, crazy top, like a checkered belt, like hanging off or something, like very uh, eclectic. Have you seen the Balenciaga sandals, the ones that look like uh, McDonald's fry containers? Do you know no, what I'm talking those about? Those aren't real. You can't. Don't tell me those are real. You haven't searched that up. Before? No. Have you seen the Gucci like fur sandals? <laughs> they no, look I like they that, look yeah. like a toupee just on your feet. They look like a what? A toupee. What's a toupee? It's like a hairpiece. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's literally ones that look like I think it's Balenciaga who made it, but they look like like uh they're red sandals and they just look ridiculous. I might be getting the brand totally wrong. It's called search up uh Balenciaga red leather slippers wherever you are. I think they're like red leather Red leather shoes. If you search that up on Google Images, you will see the first one. Balenciaga leather slippers in red. These things, I don't know what to think of them. They sell for like $1,000. Why did they, the angle that they chose to put like the, the slope it, is <laughs> is very questionable. It, it really is. But uh, yeah, well, it's already been 30 minutes. So I think we'll like wrap up the podcast there, but uh, this is a really good, this is a really good starting episode. But uh, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, definitely make sure to uh, leave a like or leave a comment on any of the platforms that we're on, wherever you're listening to this from. We're open to any feedback. We're trying to really improve. Um, This is one of our starting podcasts. I'm hoping to have a bunch more cool guests on the show. I'm hoping to have Trevor back a ton to talk about more stuff going on in our college. Trevor, where can everyone find you at if they want to? Uh, Trev, Trev05 on Instagram. Trev, That's T R E V T R E V 05. Yeah, we'll definitely be hearing more, Trevor. Um, if you guys made it all the way to the end, thank you a ton. We try and re- we're going to try to release new episodes soon. But thank you again, guys. Like and subscribe. Watch out for the next episodes. Have a nice night.